What is happening guys? Corey here from designsbyifr.com and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to address my top 10 most common water cooling mistakes that I see a lot of people doing over and over again. Whether you be a professional water cooler or a beginner water cooler, everybody does make mistakes. So I thought I would compile this short list as a checklist to go through when you are actually doing your own water cooling loop so you are able to avoid these common mistakes. Now guys, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider subscribing, it really helps out the channel. And also follow our Facebook page. We have daily posts of custom PCs and of course, we've got custom PCs all over this channel as well. So definitely check them out after the video. I hope you all enjoy. Common mistake number one. Have you ever did a tube, it looks perfect, and then you've accidentally cut it a tiny bit short? We have a problem here. A lot of people will think, wow, this is such an amazing bend. It took forever to achieve that. And it does, especially if you're doing up to three or more bends within the same tube but they've cut it a bit too short. It doesn't fit perfectly into the fitting, but they don't want to start again. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that you can do, guys, is cut a tube a bit too short and just use it because it actually does go in and you do the fitting up tight. The problem is over time, the tube can actually come loose from the fittings and that could cause a huge water cooling catastrophe. For the simple amount of time that it took to do that actual bend, you are going to be saving a lot more money by preventing all of your hardware from being damaged from all of the liquid. And adding on to this point, may I say that if you're using any type of oil or soap to insert that silicon insert, be sure to actually wash all of the tube out and definitely wash the outside out because that also creates a bit of a lubricant for it to slip out of the fitting as well. Tip number two is actually called deburring. What that means is you're using the deburring tool to remove all of the acrylic bits on the inside after you've just cut, but you're also eating away on the outside bit to make sure that it's not sharp. Now what this does is it prevents the O-rings from being split when you actually insert the tube. Now this has happened to me personally before. I've inserted a normal tube into the fitting a couple of times here and there to test whether the tube length would be right. And then I found that my O-ring has actually received some gouges in it and it's actually cut the O-ring as well. So it's definitely worth deburring these things. It saves the O-rings, not only the O-ring that you put over the tube, but the O-rings that are within the fitting as well. Now, if these do split, this can cause some major leaks within the system. Again, it's just another precaution that you should take to avoid all your vital components from being damaged. Tip number three, this is also a really common one, especially for those people who are on a budget and don't know a lot about water cooling. Mixing metals, guys. It is a big no-no in the water cooling industry to mix metals. A lot of people will cheap out and buy aluminium stuff or aluminum for those guys in the US and they'll mix it with copper. Now what this does is it speeds up the corrosion process because you are mixing metals and they are reacting together with the liquid. Now one way to avoid this is if you're going to go with aluminium, you need to make sure every single part in the water cooling system is aluminium as well and vice versa everything or copper or nickel plated because nickel and copper are pretty much the same on that corrosion scale. Tip number four, can you use tap water? Now you can certainly use tap water to actually clean out the system itself, but then you would have to flush that with distilled water. Now the reason is tap water contains all of the minerals which would also promote all of that corrosion and could also promote growth within the system. You'll be having your own little rainforest in no time. Now distilled water actually goes through a boiling process where all of the minerals are left behind and only the vapor and steam is collected to create that distilled water. Now this process is done multiple times to make sure that everything is certainly removed. However, over time in your system, this will gain different minerals from all the metals and everything within the system. So you need preventions in place to prevent any growth or corrosion occurring in the system. That is where biocide additives come into play or even silver kill coils, which is a natural biocide. Our next tip is leak testing. A lot of people think that turning the PC on for a few minutes and seeing that there's no leaks means that your system is leak free. Now the best thing that you could absolutely do for your system is do some leak testing. Power on the pump 
and nothing else, guys. Let the system leak for 12 hours or as long as you can, guys. The more, the better. And as time goes on, your chances of getting a leak dramatically decrease. It's not worth losing a whole system worth of value for the simple fact that you did not spend a couple more hours actually leak testing the system itself. Now here's one that uh, I have actually done before. When you receive a water block, you've got protective film on the underside of it. Now uh, a lot of people, and I've done it myself, I am certainly guilty of it, a lot of people forget that that protective film is on there, especially when they're busy caught up in trying to get their loop done and they install the water block with the protective film still on. You notice that your temperatures are running hot on the PC and you're trying to figure out what the problem is. Definitely don't leave this step out guys. Remember to check if that protective film is off of the water block before you do install it. Now believe me, it sounds stupid, but you can get so caught up in the moment getting a water-cooled PC together and you can forget about it. Now this is a big one that a lot of people forget. I've seen big YouTubers forget about it. I've seen pro water coolers forget about it. I've seen so many people forget about it. It's leaving a fitting undone when they're filling their loop. So they've got all of their tube bends in place, but they've forgotten to put a stop fitting. Now, I remember seeing a YouTube video a couple of months back, uh, Kyle from Bitwit or Awesome Source. He actually did one of his first water cool PCs and he forgot to put a port on his PC when he was filling it. So what happened? A lot of water just came gushing out the side. Now, luckily he was able to power off his PC in time and luckily that this water was non-conductive. So no components were damaged in the process, but I've certainly seen it happen a number of times for it to be included in this list. Now, this is also a big one. Over tightening screws when water cooling, and this is more noticeable on those acrylic water blocks. People are very worried about leaks happening. So they really want to make sure that stuff is really tight. But over tightening is and can be worse than actually leaving it just finger tight. Now the problem doesn't occur straight away, it occurs over time. Eventually the pressure from over tightening these fittings creates little stress cracks in all of the acrylic. Now these can't get any better. Over time they just get worse and worse and eventually the blocks will be unusable. The stress cracks will eventually lead to leaks through the acrylic. Now this will take some time, but it is a ticking time bomb. Now to prevent that, just finger tighten all your, all your screws. They won't leak, the rubber seal is making enough contact with the water block itself. So you don't have anything to worry about. So I think this next tip has to do more with the new water coolers out there who are starting to begin water cooling and they're choosing all their fittings. They've seen a lot of these particular fittings used, but they've forgotten a drain port. A drain port's one of the easiest systems to remove a heavy body of liquid out of the system when you need to clean the loop. Now, a lot of liquids these days have a shelf life of around three years, so you can use them in your system for about three years. I like to clean my system and flush it out about once a year, and having a drain port is the easiest way to do this. Now, the reason a lot of people forget to add a drain port to their system is because they're not thinking about draining it. They're only thinking about getting the liquid in there to get their PC up and running. So when it comes to the draining process, they're stuck. Do they just let the water flow out over all their components? What do they do? So installing a drain port is certainly one of the easiest way to remove that major part of liquid and then it makes it easier to take each individual liquid cooling component out and keep it spill free. Now, of course, you may get a drop or two here, but that's nothing that paper towel cannot fix. And finally, our 10th and last water cooling tip and most common mistake is that people are not cleaning out and flushing out their brand new gear. They think that because it's brand new, they're not going to have any trouble with their water cooling system. Now this has been particularly in most recent years more common due to the new view fluids and everything that have come out, which require very, very strict cleaning. So a lot of companies with their radiators, they don't actually clean them out properly. There's a lot of flux and everything left within the radiator, which reacts with the different liquids in your system and can react negatively in all your components. You may see some sort of powdery coating over your tubes and water blocks. You can even get blockages in your system. So definitely a thorough cleaning of the radiators in particular, which contain a lot of flux 
a different gunk and material from all of that soldering, which is used to actually make these radiators. There is a lot of prep products out there which are recommended by all of the liquid cooling manufacturers. So definitely check their guides and lists and see what they recommend to actually clean the system out. Anyway guys, I hope you learned something new today. That was my top 10 list for the most common water cooling mistakes that I have actually seen out there on the internet myself. And I've also fallen for some of these myself, so I had to include them in the list. Everyone makes mistakes, guys, so it is bound to happen to all of us, but you can only learn from them and go from there. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed. Follow this list next time you're water cooling, making sure that each step has been accomplished before you actually fill the system. And remember, guys, we have plenty of other videos on the channel just like this one, plenty of water cooling tutorials, reviews, modding tutorials, and lots and lots of custom PCs, guys. Consider subscribing if you did enjoy the video and leave a comment down below, guys. Is there any other water cooling tips you would like to include for others to read down below? Start those conversations because this is a learning community and of course a custom PC building community. So everyone's opinion and tips are welcome. Hope you all enjoyed guys and we'll see you all in the next one.